the Nephilim. We've all heard, well, the majority of people on this YouTube channel, I do believe, have heard of the Nephilim, the ancient giants of old. And they're not in one specific geological location on the earth. They're not. It's as if they were spread all over the earth. And I think the height that we thought is not really that which we've been told. There's some accounts of the Nephilim being around 40 to 60 feet tall. Um, that's really massive. It's tall. And if you're that tall, you're going to weigh a whole lot. You are. You're going to weigh around a thousand pounds and or more, depending on your body structure. So um, I hope you can hear me. I'm not an expert in this, but um, I want to talk about it. I want to look into it. I want to see what we can discover. Um, maybe um, fill in some gaps. Okay, I think that would that would be pretty neat. And um, if if you didn't get if you're watching this video and you say, Gina, I did not get the um, notification. I'm sorry. I, it, it's beyond my control. Hello there, Al Sanchez. Um, very tall, needs a lot of food. Fondering warist. Yes. I read that they were cannibals. Okay, I did. And um, we're going to look at a, uh, a newspaper, a newspaper article also, and we're going to look into this a whole lot more so um, thank you all for coming on here let me there goes my voice again you every time I get ready to say something my voice wants to itch and I, I don't like it I really don't like it um hello there Apple Brooks yeah well hate is a very strong word it's like the word abhor it really is it's a strong word for abhor now see look how tall I am in this this is up to 40 feet tall. I can shrink myself down. You can see me. I'm going to shrink myself down to a normal me in my yard. That's that's how big I look. Uh, if I'm out there, I'm like five foot, five foot one and a half. That's my normal size right here. But if I were to raise, this would be like 10 feet. Uh, this would be like 15 feet. This would be 20 feet, 25 30, 35, 40 feet tall. I could literally take my hand and hold a little human in my hand. That's how big my hands would be. You know how it says, fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be him dead or be him live, I'll grind his bones and make my bread. And then you have Jack, that's Jack and the Beanstalk. And then, you know, they have the ho, 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 green giant. See, look how big my hands are. If I was a 40-foot Nephilim giant, you could see that my hand could literally, I could hold a human being in my hand. Okay, I could. Uh, so that's, this is really, this is kind of terrifying if you want to know the truth. It really is to think about it. They think that there were giants this tall roaming the land. Okay. Uh, that's very tall. Let me um, let me take you to some pictures I had open. I had so many pictures open, Gina, honey. You did. I did. You all had so many pictures open. Let me see if I can get to the ones. I want to try to close out some of these pictures that I had open. If you all please just um, bear with me because I had way too many open down here on the bottom and it's some um, kind of disruption. I'm very happy to be back on here because um, I haven't done a live stream in the studio since I was gone on vacation and I didn't want to it was very hard for me to refrain but I did I refrained from doing it I did um, so let's look at this you all this is how I figured this out see look at me so I've got this on here this would be like 40 feet or 25 feet 5 10 15 20 25 this would be um, I put a marker on the tree you can see right here um, and I had a measuring tape I measured like five foot I just made it even five foot one and a half so I put that's five feet going all the way up and that's how I came to 5 10 15 20 25 I did this in the OBS studio 
uh, so you can see it right here. That's 25 feet. Um, that's before, a while ago, I read up a little bit more and it said, you know, some of them, their accounts of their uh, biblical accounts of the people saying we're, we feel like grasshoppers. They feel like grasshoppers among the giants. Um, that's what they said. Which is um, sad. It really is sad. You can see right here, this is, um, this is like one of the tallest. Well, he's not that tall. This is Chang the Giant. You can see that he's not very tall at all. This is only the accounts that they give us. Seven foot eight for Chang the Giant compared to prehistoric man right there. Okay, now here's me, 5, 10, 15, 20, at 20 feet. If I was 20 feet tall, if I was a, a Nephilim of old, you can see this. 20 feet. I just got myself scattered about you off. Yep, yeah, let me, I want to take you through these screenshots. <laughs> I do. That's okay. We can look through these screenshots um, is what we can do. Okay, if I was 15 feet, okay, that would be three of me. 15 feet would be three of me. Of course it is, Gina. We know it is, Gina. Okay, so we have this uh, Chang the Giant. He's seven foot eight inches. Okay, that's what he was as recorded. And if I was, look, if I was 25 feet tall, and if I was 120 feet at five feet tall, I would weigh around 600 pounds. That's, that's, um, that's how tall I would be, and that's how much I would weigh that much. Look at this, you all. Could you imagine 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 feet tall? I'm almost at the top of these, this locust tree, and there was biblical accounts of cedar trees, okay, being as tall as the cedar trees. Um, so let's um, see right here. 960 pounds I would weigh at my current weight if I was 40 feet tall. 960 pounds. Um, and again, I could hold a human in my hand if I was that tall. And um, so just imagine a prehistoric looking caveman. And uh, the, it is said that they were like, um, they ate meat and um, they were the children. They were like the Nephilim from the fallen angels who mated with the women. The women, how can you have a baby that big coming out of you all? Um, I don't know how I would not want to, um, you know, have something that big coming out of me. I wouldn't. I don't know how that's humanly impossible. I don't know how that's humanly possible. I really don't. That part right there doesn't make sense. It could happen. I mean, there were giants. There is an account of giants. Um, hello. Yes, we got this going on. You, know, I'm trying to get myself on here. Hello there, Susan B. Honey, Al Sanchez, and Apple Brooks. Okay, you all say, Gina, please. Gina, will you please, <laughs> Gina, please get down to the information. Um, we're getting there, you all. We're going to get there. We're going there right now. Okay, so this is article right here. And, of course, this is from 1896, the New York Journal. How the prehistoric man would look today if constructed by an ethnologist. I've never heard of an ethnologist, but that's okay. Is this the ancestor of the, oopsie, the American race? Well, I don't know about it. So look at this. The heights of all the giants whom we know of. Goliath in Palestine, 11 feet. Now, really, what if Goliath was much larger than 11 feet? What if he was, and they're just saying these feet so as not to alarm us? What if? Um, Galbera in Rome, 10 feet. Phnom in Scotland, 11.5 feet. Um, De Velamont, uh, 17 feet. Count Bouchart, 22.6 feet. Thud Bocus, um, 25.5 feet, unknown, somebody in Palomaro, 30 feet. Um, John Middleton of England, 9.3 feet. 
and then the modern heights okay look at this Frederick Sweden 8.4 7.9 8.1 8.7 7.8 so these are very low um, very low heights according to um, something else okay very low heights according to something else but let's look at this one thing right here I just want to read this one part right here so Dr. Binion he tells how to build a prehistoric giant it's easy to reconstruct from the footprint of a, pre a prehistoric man uh, his entire form according to the proportions of a modern man an ordinary this is this is really what's interesting you all thank you for tuning in this um, okay an ordin an ordinary man six feet high has a foot about 12 inches in length and and that's that's pretty accurate if you're around six foot your foot might six foot tall you might have maybe a 12 foot um, a 12 inches your foot size 12 okay that's right you got to wear you got to wear shoes size 12 if you're around six foot okay that makes sense okay and it, he sounds very sensible to the man okay with a foot of 29 inches long it would be about two and a half times as tall that person if they had a 29 inch long foot he would be two and a half times as tall so it'd be around 12 foot or between 17 and 18 feet high so that's interesting right there to the man that's six feet high a weight of 200 pounds may be allowed two and a half times that would be 500 pounds Add to this one third for a proportionate increase in all directions, and you have a total of 660 pounds. That would be the approximate weight of our prehistoric man. Uh, they're talking about this one right here, you all. So, this prehistoric man right here would have an approximate weight of 660 pounds. And um, that's compared to Chang the giant, who is 7.8 feet tall. So this giant right here would be around 18 feet tall. If you were to take um, Chang the giant and um, you put one over top here, so that's like 16, that's around 18. He could be 20 some odd feet tall. You all, he really could, 20 some odd feet tall. But we're not we're not going to read too much in this right here. Um, let, let's see this right here so oh did I get this on here you are I'm so sorry I'm too busy talking to myself let's see this according to the same system of reckoning he would have a brain weighing 125 ounces and that would give him a large thinking power he would be about 100 inches round the chest and would have biceps 18 inches in circumference 18 inches in circumference well I don't have nothing to show that um, I don't um, hello yeah Corbett and Sullivan would be ridiculous pygmies compared to him whoever Corbett and Sullivan is the average man's stride in walking is two feet this he prehistoric man would take five feet with each stride that he walked a very fast professional runner can cover in the neighborhood of a mile in five minutes the giant would perhaps be able to go um, two and a half miles in five minutes could you imagine that two and a half miles in five minutes a giant around 20 feet tall with a stride of five feet oh my gosh you probably shake the earth he probably would um, but many considerations enter into this question he would have to overcome a great deal of friction his capacity for eating you all this is where it's going to get this is where it's going to get wild you all it would his capacity for eating would be tremendous he could drink a gallon of wine and eat a whole sheep at a meal the prehistoric people however did not eat as regularly as we do they ate all they could get when they got it they were great gourmands and very carnivorous mighty eaters of flesh and fish you are 
mighty eaters of flesh and fish. They were um, carnivorous, carnivorous, carnivores. They eat humans. They hold the humans in their hands like Jack and the Beanstalk. Sheep, that was what they ate of that proportion. They ate all they could get. All they could get. I really think that there is truth to that Jack and the Beanstalk. I really do. And he found that bean and it grew a great big giant beanstalk up through the clouds. Up through the clouds, you all. Up to where the giant was at. Up there. And a great big old table. A great big old house. A great big old door. There's got to be more to Jack and the Beanstalk than what meets the eye, okay? It's not a myth. I really don't think it's a myth at all, you all. I think that they have watered down, poured a lot of water on the history of Earth, okay? That's what they've done. They've watered it down dramatically. Um, and I'm not being dramatic. I'm just being very serious. They have watered down history of Earth and beings on this Earth dramatically so as not to frighten people is what I think they didn't want to frighten people this gigantic um, being right here you all he could um, eat a whole sheep he just walk wherever he wants and takes whatever they wanted uh, they probably ate practically all the humans they probably did uh, could you imagine what it would take to feed a being that tall you wouldn't have enough food. There would not be enough food for small people. Okay, there wouldn't be enough food for small people. I do that every time. There wouldn't be enough food for small people because um, if I was um, a small person like that, and I am, I am short, um, could you imagine if I had like an apple? I can put an apple in my hand and I can eat an apple and an orange and um, I don't know. It'd be hard for me to eat a whole chicken. It really would. But for a giant around 40 feet tall. Oh my. Their appetite would be unending. That's what it would be. Unending. So um, if you're just tuning in and talking about um, this, these giants. The Nephilim of old. And I don't think that. We've been told the whole truth, and, and that's a given. It really is. So they were carnivorous, mighty eaters. Um, this giant would doubtless have needed 10 pounds of meat in a day. If he understood the art of brewing, he would have been able to drink a keg of beer. If he were as powerful as Sandow... Who is Sandow? Have you all heard of Sandow? I've got to look it up. I've never heard of Sandow. I want to know who Sandow is. We can see whoever Sandow is. It's just a bodybuilder. That's all it is. It looks like it's just a bodybuilder. Well, no. Why are you talking about Sandow? Okay, Sandow is not a giant. So, no, I don't want to look at Sandow. We're not even going to bother with Sandow. Sandow is irrelevant at this point. Okay. If he was as powerful as this individual, in proportion to size, he could have carried a ball under his each arm. He could have broken in any modern doorway, and it would have required six or seven of the strongest and courageous policemen to arrest him. It is perhaps idle to base speculations on his strength on that of a modern man. Okay, well, okay, that's why you're saying a modern man, it would take seven people to arrest him. It would probably be far greater in proportion to his size. The chimpanzee, which is somewhat smaller than a man, can twist a gun barrel with his hands and is stronger than two or three men. So it's reasonable to suppose that a prehistoric man who lived almost as a wild animal, as you can see right here, he lived almost like a wild animal with his... um coverings um, he would have the strength proportionate to that of an ape in that case the giant would have had truly a fearful strength it's curious to note that the legends of races of giants have been more or less accepted in all ages in the bible are mentioned the anakamites 
the last of whom Og, the king of Bashan, was slain by Moses. Then there were the Cyclops of Greek mythology. Dr. Shellman has discovered remains of gigantic buildings which led him to believe in the actual existence of a Cyclopean race. So we've got the Anakamites. I, I've not heard of it. I haven't heard of the Anakamites. I haven't, but I've heard of King Og, the last of the giants in the Bible. And I really didn't know about it until this past year or two. Within a year, never even knew, never even thought, wow, but they got a big giant in the Bible. Okay, but they had a great big giant, and I've, I've seen the Cyclops with Hercules. Okay, you all have seen it too. Hello, everybody. Hello there, Christine Mott, honey. Thank you. Yes, you also come on. Let's see this. An 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 Anakamites. Okay, the Anakamites. I don't know what the Anakamites is. Anakamites. What is an Anakamite? Anakin, Anakin, hey, you know that, um, who is that guy on Star Trek? He was called Anakin, or was it Anakim? Um, that boy, or whoever he was, was he a Anakin or Anakim? Yeah, I'm not sure of who he might have been. Star Wars, yeah, oh, my, my nose is itching, you all. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, Anakin. Okay, this ain't it. So, who were the Anakites? Um, let's look. Oh, you all, this is going to get good. This is really cool. The Anakamites. I want to know what the Anakamites, who the Anakamites are. I've never, this is the first time I've ever heard the word Anakamites. Anakamites. So this is going to get interesting, and I hope you find it interesting, too. So who were the, the Anakim, the Anakites? Um, the Anakim, Anakites, were a formidable, formidable, formidable race of giant warlike people. Uh, Deuteromity. Oh, let's see this. Deuteromity 210. The Emim formerly lived there. A great people, and many, and tall as the Anakim, the Emin. Have you all heard of the Emin? Um, I've not heard of the Emin. See, that's a new one, too. Now I'm, uh, we've heard of the Emin and the Anikes, Anakonikes. We've heard of the Nephilim. Everyone's heard of the Nephilim and the giants, but the Emin, that's really interesting, you are. It really is interesting. Oh, my goodness. So the Emin formerly lived there, a great and many as tall as the Anakim, who occupied the lands of southern Israel near Hebron before the arrival of the Israelites. Um, so according to the commandments of the Lord to Joshua, he gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a portion uh, among the people of Judah, Kiratha Araba, which in Hebrew, Arba, father of Anak. Oh, Anak. Okay. So the Anakim's ancestry has been traced back to Anak, the son of Arba, Joshua, who at the time was regarded as the greatest man among Anakim. The, he the name Hebrew, formerly it was... Kira Atharaba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and the land had rest from war. <gasps> Do you see that, you all? It's talking about the long necks. You know the African tribes who stretch their necks? Now here, I just saw the amp long necks. The long necks. The name Anakin means long-necked, tall. They're tall with long necks. The Hebrews thought them to be descendants of the Nephilim, a powerful race who dominated the pre-flood world. Um, the pre-flood world. When the 12 Israelite spies returned from exploring the promised land, they gave a frightening report of people great and tall 
whom they identified as the sons of Anak. The Israelites seized with fear and believing themselves to be mere grasshoppers in their sight. They rebelled against God and refused to enter the land that God had promised them. Wow. Um, the descendants of the Nephilim. You think they were? You think the Anakim was the descendants of the Nephilim? Let's see what this says. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim, and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. Wow. Let's get that over there, you all. Now, this may not be for everyone. I just want to tell you right now, but this is what I feel led on my heart to speak about in my spirit. I didn't know I was going to find this right here. A people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, whom you know, and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand before the sons of Anak? Now, I'm just going to admit right now... <laughs> To people who read the Bible, the Old Testament, um, I've stayed away from those books in the Bible, those like this Deuteronomy. I admit it, you all. I'm serious. I admit it. I, <laughs> I did not read that. That was, that was too much for me. It really was. I, I just skipped right over those books. And I went to the Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes and Ruth. Uh, and then Queen Esther and the Psalms, and I did the New Testament. I, I did a little bit of the Genesis. Mm, yeah, maybe some Ezekiel, but those other ones, yeah, I skipped over them because I thought I can't get into it. And I did not know that these were in here. I didn't. And has it always been in there, or is this part of the Mandela effect? Um, for you all who have studied the Bible and you have studied those books right there, have they spoke of the Anak? Anak? Anak! Anunnaki! Do you think they're talking about the Anunnaki? Because really, if you think about that, Anak? Anunnaki. Why would they spell it A N A K? This is giving me a, I'm sweating you all, not to mention it's hot up here, but wow. Wow, you all. That's who they're talking about. Whoa. That is really interesting. Let me just say this. I believe that there is a time and place for everything that happens under the sun. And if we're meant to see something or hear something, it will be seen and heard at the moment that it's supposed to, not any time sooner, because perhaps it wasn't the right timing, okay? So obviously it was not the right timing for me until this very moment in time to read about this, you all. I am a firm believer in that. I really am. Um, so that I'm, I'm thankful. Yeah, now, I, now I'm hearing about it, you all. It's making me lightheaded hearing about it. It really is. I got, oh my gosh. So, um, the Hebrews thought them to be the descendants of the Nephilim, a powerful race who dominated the pre-flood world. Okay. They rebelled against God. So, let me see where they rebelled. Great and tall. Who could stand before them? Okay, then, yet... You would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Oh, wow. Um, so the Israelites were exhorted by Moses not to fear the Anakim. Then we set out from Horeb, and we went through all the great and terrifying wilderness that you saw on our way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. 
Okay. So what's this over here? You all, how did my screen get so big? Yet, in spite of this, you did not believe the Lord your God who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents. So listen to this, you all. So they were guided. They were guided by a cloud by day and a fire by night. So could you imagine? Could you imagine? You're looking up in the sky. Now, I can imagine it, and I know you can imagine it because you know there's something going on with the clouds. If you were going somewhere and you had this cloud in the sky, is the only cloud in the sky, and you lost your way, and you needed to find your way back home for some reason or another, and you had that cloud, a big cloud in the sky, and it literally was guiding you. What do you think is in that cloud, you all? Do you think it's like maybe a ship of some sort, a chariot of some sort? I could picture it now, a cloud by day being guided. I can. I can picture it. If I was lost and I saw a cloud up in the sky and it was leading me and I found my way out of where I was going, oh, I'd be very thankful. And then a fire by night. If you saw a fire in the sky... Okay, and that fire literally guided you in the sky. What if it was like a great big gigantic light in the sky? Now, what would be that? Would that be like some kind of a ship, some kind of a chariot, something like that guiding you through? And it got you through wherever it was you're going until the daylight came and then the cloud took over? You all, I think there's so much more to this than what meets the eye. I really do. I think there's something to these clouds. And I think it's not an earthly and or, of earthly origin, it's not. It's of a heavenly origin, um, higher realm, higher dimension, a divine. These are divine um, things that are happening, okay? Not just to them, y'all, but you know that you've seen these things. There's people who have been seeing, the, who's seen, who's seen those fires, it's spiritual beings uh, who have seen things in the clouds too, okay? It's... um. This is wild, you all. It's so wild. Yes, it's so wild. So um, let's see this, you all. So they got the Anakim, the Anakim. So he, they went a cloud by day, you all. So this is, um, they felt like they were grasshoppers. The Anox, the Anox, Anok, the Ananaki. Anakim's ancestry has been traced back to Anak. Wow. And they believe themselves to be grasshoppers. So what you're talking about, Jos Joshua? Get, uh, Joshua, get, I can't get that off of there, you all. I don't know how to get that. Okay. So they refuse. Okay, so you got this. Um, Joshua expelled the Anakim from the hill country. Uh, and Caleb finally drove them out of the Hebron. Okay, however, a small remnant found in found refuge in Gaza, Gath, Ashdod. Ooh, Anakin's descendants were the Philistines' giants David encountered, including Goliath of Gath. So there was war in between. There was a war again with the Philippines and Israel. And David went down together with his servants. And they fought against the Philistines. And David grew angry. And Ishbibinob, -Ish one of the descendants of the giants, whose spear weighed. How much did his spear weigh? I want to see how big his spear. How much did his spear weigh? I haven't read this either. How, I want to see how, how much his spear weighed. Because that would tell you how big he was. There was a war. Okay. His spear weighed 300 shekels of bronze and, who's, and who was armed with a new sword thought to kill David. Oh, wow. So 300 shekels of bronze. I don't know how much it is. Um, they have somebody called um, the Philistine at Gob. And Elhanan, the son of Jara Oregum, the Bethlehemite, struck down Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Oh my gosh, that's really big. And then there again, war at Gath. 
and there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in number, and he was descended from the giants. And he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, struck him down. These were four, these four were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and his servants. So they six fingers, six six fingers and six toes. That does sound like it, um, you all. That does sound like um these giants. So let's and again, this is me right here. I this is me at 40 feet tall. If I was one of those giants, which I'm not, um, this is a regular human down here. 5 feet, 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 feet tall, as tall as the tree. Okay, and these beings, they were uh, carnivorous beings. They were. Um, this right here also goes to, um, it talks about um, a little bit more. Uh, about these people okay these beings uh, let's see if we can find it they they found footprints is what they had found they found um, footprints everywhere they're talking about this one footprint look at this the depression at once suggested a human foot it was an enormous size there was a well marked hollow where the heel would have been and a very faint depression indicated the arch of a foot the ball of a big toe and the rest. Um, it is remembered that no other animal has arch foot like that other than a human being. So the foot they found was 29 inches in length. Its greatest depth was four inches. Um, it was nine feet away from the first, okay, the foot. So when they saw another print, it was nine feet between it. Uh, so the length of the stride, which the giant had been in the habit of um taking so look at that nine feet oh my gosh you all this is see and um yes nine feet giant and you're and sasquatch we i don't think we got to worry about sasquatch or bigfoot because these um beings these um nephilims or anakim annex um they they were like 40 feet tall and um, they could hold you in their hand. They could. And um, I think they spoke about something. I think it was in the book of Enoch. How these giants. Um, they, they ate all the food that the human produced. And they couldn't um, produce enough food. And they ate, all the, they ate all their food. And then they started eating the people. They did. They ate the people up. Also, and they, they were warring against them. That's how horrific it got on the earth. Okay, it is. Big giants. And you know what? What if there's some still living today? Living under the ground. They could be. They could be under the ground. You never know. You really don't know. I don't know where they would be at. But this is really interesting, you all. The Anakin, the Anakites, and then the son of Anak, Anak, Ananaki. Um, the Ananaki, you all. Let me, let me, let's put this here. We can stick this in the live stream since I talked about it. The Anak. Mm, right there, you all. And um, well, I'm supposed to be reading this book. And this may not be, oh, this is awful. This is. The remains of the stone, they found these stones in France too. Same thing in France. The stone hampers the axes, uh, Europe, Asia, and America. They found all this stuff in all of these um, different countries. From the remains of men of the Stone Age found in France, it was concluded that they had massive bones, long and flat feet, comparatively short arms and long forearms with powerful muscles, greatly developed jaws, widely open nostrils and they were unbridled passions uh, the professor found that the thigh bones in their width approaching those of the highest ape and a remarkable transverse flattening of the tibian um, 
the ascending branch of the lower jaw was very wild, very wide, and the cranial capacity was equal to that of high races of the present day. Another archaeologist said that the man of the Stone Age lived without fruits, was essentially produceous and carnivorous, and an eater of raw flesh and a cannibal. There is no scientific evidence to disprove the theory about gigantic races of men that lived on the earth in the days of its infancy, they said. The traditions of the most ancient of civilized people contain strong testimony that there were such races, you all. And this was from, let me put this on here, you all, so you can see this. You all can, can you all see that? Giants, see if that will open this up in here, you all. Let me see what happens. If I put this in here, what happens to you? Can I see where that goes? Let me, can I click it? Um, I don't think you can click it. Well, that's not good. Um, yeah. It doesn't want to look right, you all. It really doesn't. Let's talk about this, you all. These were giants. Oh, my. And I really, um, carnivorous, carnivorous giants. Of old, you can see the article right here. Is this the ancestor? And it's from the New York Journal, Sunday, August the twenty third of eighteen ninety six. Uh, is what that is. Now, this right here. Let's see about um, this right here. The size of the Nephilim. This is April. In corrupting the image, days of Noah, fallen angels, giants of antiquity and Nephilim, the spies reported the next 40 years. Okay, let's see. So, however, we must not discount the facts of their report. The first of all, they mentioned that the people of the land were stronger than they were. They're talking about these giants. Uh, I guess it's the Israelites or somebody talking about the giants. Okay, it's a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people we saw in it are of great height. There were not just a few tall people there, but all the people were enormous. In fact, these people were so tall and large that the Israelites likened themselves to grasshoppers compared to these Nephilim. And we are like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we are in their sight. Grasshoppers, you all. You know, if you look down at a grasshopper, well, um, it's not that big in your hand. You could hold it in the very teeny, teeny palm of your hand. Now, um, yeah. And if, if, if this image right here, if my hand right here... I would be smaller than a grasshopper. I'd have to be a lot smaller than this compared to the giants that they're speaking of. If they said they felt like a grasshopper, then um, this picture of me would have to be a whole lot bigger. I'd have to be enormous in order to um, fit the description of a grasshop, them to be grasshoppers. They would have to be teeny, teeny, teeny. They'd have to be even tall, smaller than that, uh, really, if I was to be that tall. Well, some people um, liken themselves, uh, e even in this day and age, as ants. They feel like they're ants compared to what's in the sky. They do, um, really, if you think about it. And you know there's many people who do look up in the sky, and they see giants up there, too. Why would they... Uh, that Jack and the Beanstalk, I don't know why they wrote that. I really don't. Um, uh, Raging the Machine, thank you. Um, it may be going on too much for people, but that's okay. So I want to see this. Let's look at this. Having the first described the people of the land, they mentioned them by name. The descendants of Anak came from the giants, the Nephilim. Joshua and Caleb do not deny the report. They simply have faith that God will do it, what he said. And the Nephilim are the reason why the children of Israel did not 
possessed the land right after leaving Egypt. The presence of the Nephilim disheartened the spies who consequently gave a bad report. God, though very upset at the people's lack of trust, nevertheless agreed with the description of the people of the land as being, this is, this is, this is where it's going to get interesting because he's going to tell you about the heights. Now, this is um, speculation, but it, sounds, it makes pretty sense. It makes pretty good sense. So um, the height of the people there. So the height of the people of the land being of a great height and also agreed with the comparison of the Israelites appearing like grasshoppers. Uh, though years later in Amos 2.9, God says, Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Okay, so this Amorite, now see, this is the first time I've heard that the Amorites were considered giants like the Anakites, um, Nephilims. They were as high, as tall as a cedar and as strong as an oak. It's, this is, um, this is, this is unbelievable uh, for me to be reading this. It really is me personally. I'm, I am finding, wow, I didn't know that was in there. And I only heard about the Nephilim. That's it. The Nephilim and the fallen angels. I never heard about the other, others. Um, I didn't. Let me, um, let's go back to this, you all. And I hope this is okay. So God's endorsement is significant. He states the height of the Amorites was like the cedars. And God also likens the tail of the mighty behemoth to a cedar in Job 40. Look now at the behemoth, which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. See now his strength in his hips. And his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. Well, what is the behemoth? He eats grass like an ox. His strength is in his hips. And his power is in his stomach muscles. And he has a tail. He has a tail. Is a behemoth a dinosaur or something? I, I've heard of the behemoth. I have, but I've really never looked and seen what a behemoth was. Um, behemoth. Behemoth. No, I, I spelt it wrong, you all. That's the wrong one, the behemoth. Um, it's a behemoth, behemoth, be, behemoth, behemoth. Well, that looks like a... Um, What is that? Oh, but then I think, is it, is it like a, this right here? Is it this right? Is it like this right here? Oh my gosh. Mm, is it this right here? You know, Wiki fandom has a lot that goes on with it. It really does. So, um, so let's see this, you all. So let's just get reading the rest of it. So 
in the book of Job, he says, God is clearly not saying that his tail was merely stiff for any tree might be used to communicate that message. However, the cedar is a tree that was renowned in ancient world and the cedars of Lebanon for their immense height. My lover is like the cedars of Lebanon. Isn't that what was said? Um, King Solomon, the book of Solomon, something about the cedars of Lebanon. What is that? Um, um, well, no, she, uh, that, uh, she just said a different one. So the righteous man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon and the righteous man will flourish. Okay. He'll grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Okay. Something about the cedars of Lebanon. Okay, well, we know that in Lebanon, they have cedars. You have cedars in Lebanon. Okay, that's fine. You, I know I get a little sidetracked. I do apologize for it. I really do. Okay, they were famous for their immense height. According to one source, the cedar, according to one source, Cedar trees can grow anywhere from 40 to 85 feet tall, and the cedar of Lebanon being among the tallest. In this book, the first six days, I discuss the size of the tail of the mighty behemoth, 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 behemoth because God uh, there likens it to the cedars of Lebanon. God states that his bones are like the picture given in the bones of the creature with em or immense strength, implying the creature was itself extremely big to need such strong bones. Oh, the description fits the sauropod class of dinosaurs extremely well and the dinosaur with its longest tail is thought to be the dip dip diplocatus i can't even say it okay y'all so their tail may have been up to 46 feet long so um it could be that the cedars that job was associated with measured more in 40 to 60 foot range um so the minimum height of the cedar that god had in mind was 40 feet so that we have a likely maximum height for the Amorites. Okay, so the that's the Amorites. The maximum height of the Amorites, which are like the Nephilim, which are like the Anan Anano Anox, Ananaki, Ananikes, um, 40 feet tall. They see this tree beside me. That's me uh, 40 feet tall with um, five times eight. Eight of me stacked up on that tree, 40 feet tall. So they were 40 feet tall. So um, let, let's look at this king of Bashan, King Og of Bashan. Uh, Moses describes the size of the bed of King Og of Bashan, who we saw was one of the Nephilim. For only Og, the king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the Rephaim. I've not heard of the Rephaim. I might have heard of the Rephaim. Have you all heard of the Rephaim? Because um, it says um, the Rephaim now. Um, the Rephaim. So I guess that's another name for the... That's another name for the... Um, Well, the descendants, look at this. It's another name. Let me make sure I've got this. Another name for the, um, the Rephaim. Um, though the Rephaim are never mentioned directly in the same breath as the Nephilim, they are directly connected to the Anakim, who were connected with the Nephilim. Um, so we have Steve Quayle conducted much research. Uh, the two were cousins or some shared some sort of blood relation. Okay, let's look up here in this right here, the Rephaite. I've never heard of the Rephaite. Let's see about this. 
Um, it was a Canaanite group of people. So in the Hebrew Bible, as, as well as a non-Jewish ancient text from the region, the Northwest Semitic, Semitic term Rephaite or Rephaim refers to either refers either to a people of greater than average height and stature as dictated in the Hebrew scriptures of Genesis and Deuteronomy or departed spirits in the Jewish afterlife. Oh, we have departed spirits in the Jewish afterlife. Sheol, as written in the following scriptures, Isaiah and Psalms and Proverbs, as well as Isaiah. See, that's... um. That's interesting. I haven't heard that before. A departed spirit. Hmm. That's really, um, um, really neat. It really is. Well, I know I'm going on and on. I do apologize. I do. So, um, so the Rephaim was the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is not in Rabbah of the children of Ammon. Is it not in Rabbah of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it. So Moses clearly says that this man's bed was nine cubits. And just how big is a cubic? The part of the arm below the elbow downward is the forearm. An ancient measure of the forearm in places, uh, 18 to 22 inches. So the Roman cubic was 17 inches. The Egyptian, 20 inches. Um, a cubic's from around the world. We just want to know how long his bed was. Want to know how long his bed was. Um, how long was King Og's bed? Um, I don't know. So we're talking about, we got the Persian royal cubic, the Arabic cubic. Um, I don't know how long his bed was. <laughs> I can't find it. The measure that was being referred to of King Og. Does somebody know how long his bed was? Mm. Okay, I think we might be getting to it, you all. I want to know how long King Og's bed was. He was the last of the um, descendants of like the Nephilim. Yeah, that's what I want to know. How big was King Og's bed? Um, of course, we don't use cubics anymore. We don't. Uh, let's look you all. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is corroborated. The length was 60 cubics by cubics according in Ezekiel's vision okay Ezekiel has came onto the scene uh, onto the scene Ezekiel's vision of the future temple the measurement that we will will be employed will be apparently the older and hence longer measure these are the measurements of the altar and the cubics Egyptian royal cubic um, I don't know how to read that um, you all, I'm still trying to figure out how long his bed was. Uh, 100. Okay. So, um, 185.67 inches was the total length of his bed. Converted into our measurements, it was almost 15 feet and 6 inches. So, 15, 47 feet, uh long and its width was um, 6.87 feet wide it's a massive bed so now we've got it thus we assume that Og must have been slightly shorter than the bed that he slept on therefore it makes him roughly around 15 feet tall so we finally we finally found out that King Og was like around 15 feet, the last of the giants, so we heard. But then what about what about all those giants, like the red-headed giants and stuff? You know the giants that they found giant bones of, and they, um, all around the places of the United States and other places in the world, they dug up the bones and uh, they found out about them, and like, um, what was it, um, Museum of Natural History 
They came and got the bones and they dumped them all in the ocean. It's like that. And um, that was the end of that. Just get rid of the evidence. Dump the bones in the ocean and people will not think about them anymore because we don't want them knowing there were giants in the land. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we know that there are giants. And you know you saw these some pictures of these people having um, giants. So that, um, oh my gosh. Now we've got, oh my goodness, 10 foot tall. King uh, Goliath was on, Goliath, look. Goliath was only about, Goliath was only around 10 foot 4 inches. I think Goliath must have been taller than that, you all. What if King Og really was a lot taller and they're just not telling us? What if he was a lot? How heavy was he? Um, 200 pounds, four to 500 pounds. Okay, 1,500 pounds. A land that devours its inhabitants. So you wouldn't want to go there. You would not want to go to this land because... Um, they ate the people. Okay, they did. Um, they were carnivorous beings, is what they were. So, um, so look at this. So, the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire, and he will destroy them and bring them, the gigantic inhabitants, down before you, so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly. Um, so, David fought Goliath okay he fought Goliath well Goliath was big nonetheless oh no oh my gosh they said Goliath would weigh a thousand sixty eight pounds and King Og would weigh about thirty one hundred pounds oh my gosh thirty one hundred pounds 3,100 pounds for King Og. Now, certainly, um, what if the King Og was about that tall and he weighed 3,100 um, pounds being that tall right there, you all? Well, I calculated my weight. If I had my body like that, I just did 120 times 8. So I'm, I'm sure it's way off. Wow. That is amazing. You all would get smashed. If he sat on you, you would get smashed. You really would. I would not. They could um, They could take and walk on top of you with their foot. They could. Um, so if you, if you were to look at it, if um, they were walking, see, even my foot right here, you see how big my foot is down here. If I'm 40 feet tall, my foot would literally smash me at five foot. Okay, that foot right there, would it could smash me underneath its foot like that. Bam. And I'd get smashed is what would happen. So, yeah, they could smash the humans. They could walk. And um, as they walk, squish them. You've seen the movies and the cartoons where they, like, step on them. Like that. Um... I have literally got a new uh, pros perspective perspective on the giants, the Nephilim, the Anaks, the Amorites, the land of Canaan, where the Anaks, the Amorites were, and the, the giants. And what was the other one? The Raphites? The Raphites? The Raphites. Um, oh, my gosh. So... Goliath was one-third shorter than Og and weighed approximately 1,000 pounds, and they were two enormous people, which simply underscores the reasons that the Israelites feared them. I would, too. They step on you, and you're gone, or they grab you with their hands. The biblical evidence is conclusive that the Nephilim were, in fact, men of extraordinary stature, and they descended from human mothers and the fallen angel fathers. You all, I want to know how that, I want to know how you could get something like that out of your body how could you if you were if i say if i was if i was one of those human women and the angels came down 
would I be five foot? Would I be six or seven feet? And then I had an angel. I don't know how big an angel might have been. Maybe nine feet, ten feet. Okay. And to give birth to um, a 40-foot giant or a 20-foot giant? How on earth is that possible? Okay. I The women must have died. They must have died. Or maybe the women... There's some, there's some missing pieces, okay, to this puzzle right here. They're leaving something out because I couldn't give birth like that. I couldn't um, like that. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Maria, Mata, don't assume fallen angels, mates in their... Oh, that's a good one. But still, um, if they had children with the women... The, the women of men, okay, the daughters of men, the sons of God and the daughters of men. Do you think um, the giant just decided to get big afterward? Um, or maybe they just stayed small and then they got super big? I don't know. I don't know how it would happen. I don't. Oh my gosh, you all, this is like too wow. That is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to think about that. Um, okay, they got a country. Oh, have you all heard of this? Targum? Jonathan states that the giants were masters of evil. They were masters of evil. Um, the country through which we have passed to explore is a land that killeth its inhabitants with diseases, and all the people who are in it are giants, masters of evil ways. And there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, of the race of the giants, Targum Jonathan. Um, the Targum makes reference to the giants of the land being of the same stock as those that perished in the flood. <gasps> Wow, which again would prove that they believed them to be Nephilim. So they didn't all perish. Okay, some of them stayed. Some of them like um, like this, they stayed just like that in the flood. Um, they didn't perish. So that's... Um, so... A people great and many and mighty as the giants. <gasps> Look at it. Here's another word for them. The em emphania. Emphania. Em imp. Imp. No. Emphania. Dwelt in it of old. A people great and many and mighty as the giants. Oh my goodness. The emphania. That's another word for the giants, I think. So we got the Raphaites. They were considered giants. Um, how many names did they give them? Um, no, I did not talk about that, you all. I didn't see that they did not. They cannot even. They don't even recognize that word, you all. The Empthanii. They don't re recognize it. Uh, wait a minute. No, see, they don't. That's really interesting. The Emphanii. I got to get that out of there, you all. I can't read it. So, um, the giants who dwelt in the plain of Gaonaberi were also reputed as the giants who perished in the flood. Okay. The ancient Targum Jonathan, how the ancient Jews believed and understood Moses, saying that the Lord your God, he goes before you as a consuming fire. Okay. Um, greater and stronger you are this day about to pass Jordan to enter in and possess the country of nations greater and stronger than you and cities many and fortified to the height of heaven a people are they strong and tall as the giants whom you know and of whom you have heard say who can stand before the sons of the giants? Now, therefore, today, um, 
that the Lord your God, whose glorious Shekinah goeth before you, whose word is a consuming fire, and I will destroy them and drive them out before you. So um, Baruch, Baruch, Josephus, um, his bones. We got the race of giants. They had bodies so large. Okay, this is they're going to describe their giants. Oh, this is making me tired with all these giants. I can't believe they got so much in just one little paragraph. There were till then left the race of giants who had bodies so large and countenances so entirely different from other men that they were surprising to the sight and they were terrible to the hearing. Oh, the bones of these men are still shown to this very day, unlike to any credible relations to other men. Just hearing them, uh, it says it was terrifying to even hear them. Wow. So there were giants, famous from the beginning, that were so great stature and so expert in war. Look, it's, it, it's documented all over the place, you all. This is, this is what it is. They're documenting. They're telling you where all of this uh, history of this giant is documented in all these um, texts and books and writings uh, from different areas is what they're doing. The Book of Jubilees from the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, records the fact of the giant's great height and even gives specific measurements. But before, they used to call the land of Gilead the land of Rephaim, for it was the land of the Rephaim, and the Rephaim were born there, giants whose height was 10, 9, 8, down to 7 cubits. I've not heard of the Tertullian. Um, the Tertullian um, wrote that the giants' bodies were still around in his day, and he believed that their remains would contained the needed DNA germs was the term of his day to bring them to life again. They want to bring them to life again? The Tertullian wrote that the giant's bodies were still around in his day and he believed their remains would contain the needed you know what to bring them to life again. They want to bring the giants back to life again. Really, now what if they do? Okay, they could. They could bring them back to life. The carcasses of the giants of old. It will be obvious enough that they are not absolutely decayed, for their bony frames are still existent. And the lasting germs of that body, which is to sprout into life again in the resurrection, um, their, their bones are going to come to life and they're going to be giants. The giants are going to come back to life. Is that what they're saying? You all, we are just about done with this. This has drained me. It really has. This is a lot to take in. Um, thus we can conclude that the Nephilim and all the other names that are in the scripture for them were not merely the offspring of a human father with a human mother. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that the Nephilim came about as a result of the good sons of Seth turning bad and then connecting with the bad daughters of Cain. The ancient world believed until the time of Augustine about the Nephilim. Every Ant Nicene interpreter, the Jewish and Christian, understood the sons of God to be angels who had sexual relations with women. And the offsprings of those relationships were the Nephilim. If, I, if there were a demonic human Nephilim hybrid in the days of Noah and afterwards, then what will there be at the time of Jesus' return? Okay, you all, this is... Um, this was um, a lot to take in. It really was a lot to take in, and I didn't know any of that. I didn't know 90% of that was in those books because I didn't read them. Uh, so there's different names for the giants, for the Nephilims, for the Anunnaki's, the Anak, the Raphaim, the 
at, I don't know them. Oh, Susan B. Honey. Yes, that's right. Um, somebody's trying to, um, people click the link. Gina is on to something and I can help her. Click what link? Um, you got a link in here? Yeah, you are. Let me, let me, I'm going to, let me do this, you all. And I don't know who these people are. I'm not, I just read something. This is what I just read from. I don't know who it is. I don't. Um, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Um, let me see. This is like the Google search. We can put the Google search in here too, you all. There was something that that time traveler said. Okay. There is. The time traveler um, had said that um, that the there was going to be um, contact with the aliens, or they, they were going to make an appearance on May the twenty fourth. Okay, so um, around less than um, two weeks away, I think less than two weeks away. They were going to make contact, and one thing, one part, this this one um, narrative, they were going to be dark skin and ten feet tall, aliens uh, or beings from another world, and they were going to be seen. Uh, that's what one said, and then I I've, I've heard another account that. Um, there's going to be beings that come from inner earth to the surface, too. I've heard that also. And I ain't heard nothing about no three days of darkness. I've heard uh, predictions of three days of darkness since um, June of 2018. Um, they, they would tell me during a live stream when I'd be outside filming, there's going to be three days of darkness in like four weeks or three weeks. I said, okay, I'm going to come back three weeks from now and I'm going to see if that three days of darkness came. And it never came. This has literally went on. It happens around two or three times a year. Uh, there is people saying there's going to be three days of darkness. And it has not happened yet. And perhaps one day it might happen. But I literally have been hearing it since uh, June of 2018. Off and on. It happens every year. And it, I don't see it. But this time traveler is... Um, supposed to be saying something on the 24th okay of May and again uh, in the fall about it yeah oh it's a picture of um, ancient Sumerians uh, there there are some ancient Sumerians okay I've probably shown what you're you're talking about before I have Wait a minute, I just saw this elongated skull. I did not hear the redhead giants had elongated skulls. Who were the redhead giants of early North America? Did you hear of that before? I didn't know they had elongated skulls. I haven't. Um, yeah. The uh, Nibiru is here. There's something here, and people have been saying that um, the skies have been getting oranger. See, now look at this. So this head right here that they're pushing, that's probably a real picture of a skull. really is. Um, it very well could be. I'm putting it back to me. You all, I'm so tired now. i got to get off of here. And um, it, it was long. I don't know how long this was. But um, there's something to this, okay, the giants of old. Because it seems like they make a comeback. And, okay, just think about the pyramids. Think about those great big giant stones. How could they humanly move them? A giant could pick them up. A 40-foot giant uh, could pick them up and move them. They could, like the cedars of Lebanon. They were approximately 40 feet high so that was like the approximate height of the giants the Anakims, Anax, Anakims, Raphaims of that um, yeah so I think the giants could have played a role in building the pyramids and what if that was for them 
And um, you know, the, like the, you have these castles and these other places with these great big massive doors on them and stuff. Who are they for? Giants. There's bound to be giants. Okay, there really is. Um, oh my. Tall as a cedar tree. And a cedar tree is really tall. It is. Oh, Star Trek Satan. The movie is real. Star Trek Satan has put the truth out. But is that the name of it? It's called Star Trek Satan, Pamela Hunter now. They got a series called Star Trek Satan. That sounds really weird. Or name something like that. Um, I've not heard of Yakub, the big-headed scientist from Inner Earth. Yeah, Gilgamesh, yeah, was a giant. Your mother is a small, dark-skinned, indigenous American from Louisiana and Oklahoma. Um, oh, he wanted love from his people. Could have that been another name for um, the great spirit and or God? Yakub yeah, goes by many different names. You ever hear the story of the, the great spirit and the fly? Um, when the great spirit spoke to the fly? Uh, Indian story. I heard it when I was little. Oopsie, they didn't want me to do that, you all. They didn't. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't find it. I can't find out the the story about the great spirit and the fly. Because the great spirit was talking to the fly, and he'd asked the fly if he wanted to do something, and the fly didn't want to. So um, the great spirit said, "Go ahead and be a fly." And the only thing you'll be able to say is buzz, buzz, buzz. That's it. Just buzz, buzz, buzz. Um, um, the Great Spirit, Wakan Tanka, Gichi, Manito, a Native American culture, is a beautiful example of a non theistic belief. An active personal non anthropomorphic deity that is intertwined with the fabric of the universe itself on the large scale and yet is personally engaged with the web of living things. The Great Spirit is the concept of a life force, a supreme being or God known more specifically as the Wakantanka in Lakota, need quotation to verify, the Gichi Manito in Algonquian and by other specific names in a number of American, Native American and First Nation cultures. Um, so yeah, the Great Spirit. That's great. Um, I'm going to go. Um, so thank you all for coming on here and thank you moderators. And it's really good to come back on here and do a live stream because I really did miss it. Um, yeah. So um, thank you, moderators, and thank you all for all your comments. Uh, please give this video um, a thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Diane Gavin, a, a corcoradio. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Apple Brooks, Jay Jocelyn, Susan B. TV, and Al Sanchez. And um, if there's anyone else on here, thank you. Thank you all for taking the time to watch. I know it's been a long video. I feel like it has. Um, so with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And thank you once again um, for coming on here this evening. Um, I learned a lot. I hope you all learned more than you might might have already known. And if not a lot, maybe maybe a teeny something more. Or maybe you might start thinking of something else in a different way. Yeah, um, knowledge is power. It is. 
Have a wonderful evening, you all. Love you.